Uh, Nathaniel here. Uh, welcome again to a bit of data science and scikit-learn, where we do learn a little bit of data science and a lot of scikit-learn. Um, again, we're working from the ground up. Uh, literally, the only thing you should know right now is how to get data sets in scikit-learn, and then how to use the estimators in scikit-learn. Hopefully, you understand the slight difference between classification and regression estimators, and that one uh, will allow you to predict the probability and the other uh, just can't do that. Um, okay, so we're moving on to, uh, like, ironically, the, the hardest hitting uh, algorithms and stuff. And, and so if you, if you want to stop after this one, you'll, you'll have had the, like, heavy hitters, but you'll be missing, you'll be missing a lot of the, the more subtle things that are very important for doing data science that we'll be doing a little bit later on. Um, these heavy hitters are, are called ensemble methods, generally speaking. Um, I've, I've written some stuff up here. Uh, the goal of ensemble methods is to combine the predictions of a couple of different estimators. Um, so there are two families. Um, there's the averaging methods. Uh, so this is the driving principle to build several estimators independently and then average their uh, predictions. And then uh, bagging and, and force are the common ones. And then you have the boosting methods which estimators are sequentially built um, in able to, or in order to uh, compensate for each other's weaknesses. <clears throat> so bagging is like, a lot of people compare it to like a democracy. Um, you get less variance, you get tons of independent voters, independent algorithms that all vote on what the right answer should be. And hopefully because they're all independent of each other and they'll have different facts and knowledge, you'll come together with, a, with an appropriate answer. Um, then you have boosting. You know, it's, it's, I can't really, um, uh, the, the approach here is that you start off with a weak algorithm, right? But then you make new algorithms to compensate for their weakness. And you continue to compensate for those previous algorithms' weakness until they're all together as, as a whole very strong. Um, so let's, let's go through this. Uh, we'll start off with bagging. Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and load our data set. <clears throat> We're using iris again, so we like flowers. We're doing lots of flowers. Um, so I'm going to be introducing you to meta estimators is the first thing. Um, and then I'm going to be introducing you to a couple of pre-canned ensemble methods. Um, a meta estimator is something that takes in other estimators to build a more powerful estimator on top. So the bagging meta estimator will take lots of small estimators, right? So in this case, we're going to be using k-nearest neighbors estimators in order to build a more powerful estimator on top. Um, let me show you what the signature looks like. So a bagging classifier. So this is a classifier, which means we're going to be predicting classes, not real number values. We will have a predict method. Will we have a uh, predict probability method? Yes, we will have a predict probability method. Um, uh, so what this basically has is this, so we're again we're looking at the bagging classifier. Um, what we need to do is we need to specify a base estimator. So this is the thing that we're going to be using a lot of, and then the number of estimators. So a base estimator. This can be k nearest neighbors. This can be uh, logistic regression. This can be uh, elastic net if you're doing a, a regression. Um, the number of estimators. So we're going to be having lots of these estimators. Remember we're in a democracy. We've got thousands of people, or in this case, thousands of, of estimators, and they all vote and figure out what the best thing is. Um, and then there's a couple of other things here. Um, one of the important things that I'd like to suggest is the out-of-bag score. But I'll go over that in just, in just a second when I show you these sorts of things. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll make a k-nearest neighbors classifier. Um, as short what a k nearest neighbors classifier does, it looks at, so I'm a point, I will look at what my nearest neighbors are. Uh, so in this case, you might see a flower that's really close to you, I'll say you're my neighbor, I'll see a flower that's pretty close, you're my neighbor, and the third closest flower is, is also your neighbor. You'll look at these three neighbors and you'll say, hey, what class are you guys? And if they all happen to be setosas, you're like, I'm probably a setosa too. Um, so that's what a k nearest neighbor classifier does. And let's go ahead, we do, uh, we make our bagging classifier. Our bagging classifier takes a k-nearest neighbors classifier um, uh, as one of its arguments. Uh, 
So in this case, it's a um, it's a meta estimator. Um, so it's a little bit composable, um, which is pretty cool. I think you can actually take bagging classifiers uh, as arguments to bagging classifiers. So you can just keep stacking them, see how well that does. Um, so some things that you'll want to suggest, max samples. So we're going to, you know, when we're bagging, we bootstrap uh, our data. So we sample from our data lots of times. So we take out about 50% of the data. Um, we only look at uh, two features. So in our iris data set, we have four features. We, we only, we're only going to look at two of them for each estimator. Um, we're going to do number of jobs equals to two. So we'll parallelize our stuff. And this is the important thing, the out of bag score. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll run this. We can fit. It takes just a little bit of time. There will be things that will take even more time later on, but you know, this is fitting a lot of stuff. It's fitting, um, it's fitting 10 estimators. So it's fitting 10 K nearest neighbors. Let's check out the out of bag score. Um, there's this kind of like magic that happens when you're doing bagging. Um, so remember, Previously, we were talking about taking a test, um, and if you were given the answer key to the test, and you were to, then to take the test, it would kind of be unfair. You wouldn't get a really good judge of how well you were doing. Um, and so we introduced cross-validation, which is a way, and I'll explain much more about this in, in, in the future, but it's a way to give you practice tests, right, and then test you on something that you've never seen before, and a better assessment of, of how well you've done. Um, when you're bagging something, you get this out of bag score, which is a really good assessment of how well you'll do. Um, and what the out of bag score is, is remember we're sampling 50% uh, uh, of the samples each time. We just, we just look at our samples. Uh, so we look at all of our data points, we take 50% of them and we use those to train. And then we use the rest to test. Um, so so, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool in that sense. Um, the the out-of-bag score is a, is a pretty decent proxy for how well you're going to be doing um, uh, on, on the test data set, um, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. So out-of-bag score is pretty reliable. So we can go ahead and predict. Um, so we predict the first one correct. Uh, we'll go ahead and predict probability. How do we predict probability here? Well, we're taking a vote. We're taking all 10 of these guys and they're all voting. Um, if nine of them vote one way and one of them votes the other way, then we've got a 90% probability and 10% probability. So it looked like everyone voted for the first guy here. Uh, and then we can go ahead and score. So how well are we doing? We're, we're doing 97.9, uh, so basically 98% uh, of our predictions were correct uh, on the training data. So we're kind of cheating uh, when we go ahead and score down here. Okay, so that's what a meta estimator does. A meta estimator has the exact same stuff. It looks the exact same. Um, it's got the predict, it's got the predict probability, it's got the score, it's got a fit, it's normal, it's got hyperparameters, who, who cares? Um, the one thing that it has that's a little bit different is this out of bag score. Um, and when you're instantiating, when you're making this model uh, in the first part, it also takes in another model. So it's sort of composable. There are some pre-canned uh, estimators as well. Uh, so these pre-canned estimators are random force. Um, random force are incredibly powerful. Uh, so you can, you can check out this here. Um, so a random force is a meta estimator that fits lots of decision trees. And so decision trees are basically, uh, at each step, you sort of ask yourself, hey, does my data point have leaves? You know, if it has leaves, then it's probably a plant. If it doesn't, then it's probably a mammal or something. Um, uh, and so this is a super powerful estimator. Um, uh, the random force classifier, as always, has out of bag score. It also can specify the number of estimators. So this is the number of decision trees inside of that. So we can specify all that. We'll have a fit. We'll have a predict, and we'll have a score. Um, and yeah, you notice like random force really powerful. Um, there are two super powerful estimators. Um, one of them is random force, and one of them we'll get to right down here is gradient tree boosting. These things are incredibly powerful. Um, okay, so um, the next thing here we have uh, Ada Boost. So this is kind of like the the, the basic boosting uh, meta estimator. Um, you can check out 
uh, the uh, what it does here. So it's going to take a base estimator. It's going to take a number of estimators. It's going to take a learning rate, and it's going to take some algorithm. Don't don't worry about the algorithm. Um, okay. If you don't specify an estimator, I think it's just going to be using trees. Uh, we can check this out here. Base estimator, it, it defaults to a decision tree. So you don't, need, you don't even need to specify one. But if you want to specify one, you can specify k nearest neighbors or something like that. The, the only thing, I guess you am not sure you could specify k nearest neighbors. The only thing that you need to specify is you need to make sure that these estimators can take weights. So logistic regression would be fine, but they need to take class weights. I and mean, if they're able to take class weights, then you can specify them. So you can, you can, you can check this out uh, here as well. Um, base estimator, uh, it must support for sample weighting is required, as well as a proper classes and in classes attribute. Um, so it needs to be a classifier um, and it needs to support weighting. Um, so, and, and yeah, this is, you know, the, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to teach you the tools to learn. Um, in this case, I can go over each of these estimators in depth, and if you'd like to, please leave comments, and I would be happy to do so um, if I see enough uh, desire. Otherwise, you know, what I'm trying to uh, teach you to do is, you know, hey, this is a meta-estimator. I know what meta-estimators do. They take in other estimators, and they look very similar. Um, but I, there's some things about, like, what it takes in, what type of estimator it might take in that I don't know. And so I'll need to go ahead and, and put a question mark at the end and sort of read like, oh, let's see what type of estimator it takes in. It takes in a regressor, or it takes in an ensemble method, or all this sort of stuff. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you, you can fit, and you can, you can score. Um, so we've got a score of 97, the fit of, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, again, very similar. After, after you're done with all of this, uh, um, like, at the end of the day, these guys are just estimators. Um, and of course, we have the uh, uh, out of bag score. If I and I didn't I didn't set that to true. Um, anyways, in boosting, you don't even have an out of bag score. So, okay. So add a boost. Uh, so this is like your classic. If I want to do boosting, and what boosting is, is a series of of estimators, each one compensating for the other's weakness. Um, there's like two ways to do it. Um, as a, sort of like a high level. What, what bagging is, is you'll start off with a lot of really low bias estimators and you'll combine them all together in order to get low variance. Um, what uh, AdaBoost does or what boosting does, you'll start off with low variance estimators and you'll continue to improve on those until you get low bias. Um, so, okay, final one, gradient tree boosting. I'm not going to go into this a whole ton, but this guy, this guy's a powerhouse. If you if you want a powerhouse algorithm, you use random forest, you use gradient tree boosting out of the box. These guys are incredibly powerful. Um, there's a ton of stuff that you can specify here. It works on trees as well. These decision trees, they're they're super, super powerful. Um, you fit, you score, you get a 99.3% accuracy. Incredibly powerful. Um, one of the things that I've not specified before is all these algorithms have this thing called warm start. Um, every estimator, and I've saved it till now because we haven't really needed it. Every estimator has a warm start. I don't know if you noticed this, but I can keep fitting my guy. Fit, fit, fit. It doesn't do anything. If I refit my guy on some more training data, so I have an estimator, I get more training data. I'm like, oh, let's, let's improve those. Um, if I fit it again, it's not going to do it. It's just going to ignore the old training data. It's going to fit on the new stuff. Unless I specify warm start equals to true. Um, if I specify warm start equals to true, it will go ahead and it will fit complete. Or it will fit on, on the new data, but retain all the information that it had in the old data. Um, in addition, uh, I can go ahead and I can add new params. So in this case, I was previously using 10 uh, estimators. Now I'm going to be using 20 estimators. Um, and I'll start, uh, put warm start equals to true, I'll fit again, and I'll score. Um, so again, I, I, I hit, you know, the 100% score really easily because, uh, I mean, these guys, you know, gradient boosting and, um, and decision trees are extremely powerful. Um, both of them also have a feature importance, uh, which shows you which features were the most important. And, and it looks like for Iris, the, the last two features were the most important features. Um, okay. Final thing that I'm going to show you here is a voting classifier. The idea behind this is to combine like very different 
uh, machine learning classifiers into a majority vote and then average them. So you can check it out here. Um, so you'll need estimators. Um, they need to invoke the fit method. If it clones these original estimators and restores class estimates. And so you just need these guys. Um, we can go ahead and take uh, logistic regression, uh, a Gaussian naive Bayes, and random forest. We can all stick them into one voting estimator. We can fit. We can score. Um, the difference between a voting classifier and a boosting uh, method here is that each of these estimators is different. They're just very different. Um, and each of these estimators is trained on the entire data set. So, okay. So that's Ensemble. These, these are the powerful methods that you need to, uh, or you'll want to use uh, when, when you're trying to, you know, crush a machine learning problem. You know, you just, you know, pop it in the jaw, make sure it doesn't get back up. Um, uh, there's some important things to note about them. Uh, that some are meta estimators. They take estimators uh, as an argument in their constructor. So they're composable. Um, voting classifier, uh, ADA boost, and uh, bagging uh, are all meta estimators. Um, then the two sort of powerhouse trucks coming out of the bag from the ensemble package would be random force uh, and uh, gradient boosting. Um, okay, I hope, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please do remember uh, the meta estimators, please do remember out of bag, and please do remember warm start, and please do remember the feature importances. Um, okay, uh, this will hopefully be the longest one of, of these that we'll do. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have learned a ton, and as always, um, it's my pleasure. So tune back in.